Well, it's a queue. It's, oh, it's a, a queue. Pros- oh, no, the point is... Yeah. Uh, there were- 100, 1,000, 10,000. What's the plan? With respect, you keep asking me the same question. The answer is therefore going to be the same. Know. No, that's not what I'm saying at all. Oh, I think you are, Jimmy Dimley. I think you actually are. <laughs> now, this was the Home Affairs Committee on the 31st of January where they were scrutinising the work of the Home Secretary, where the legacy backlog and the government's flagship Rwanda bill got a mention. And also, the all-important question got asked. OK, J- just on this 33,085, they are part of the flow backlog, or are they a separate backlog? Separate backlog. They are part of the 94,000 asylum caseload. You're, you're keeping them all together in one flow backlog, even though this 33,000 actually, at the moment, we think can't apply, can't so apply they are for counted asylum. in our total caseload of work that is in our system. Right, so 94,000 is the current backlog. It's, it's, the, back, case, it's case, the caseload. The caseload. OK, so that's different from the backlog because... It's not... It's not it, I mean, these are the cases that we're working on, we're working through uh, at the moment. The backlog was... Uh, the backlog was uh, specific, so at the time of the change of legislation, there were a number of outstanding cases. We committed to give an initial decision uh, on those, and with the exception of the small number, which I know the committee has uh, commented upon. Well, that's the legacy but, backlog. Yeah. Yeah, so, you, uh, so we put that to one side because you say you've completed that. I know there are some concerns that that isn't the case, but you say they've done that. Yeah. But you've still got a backlog of claims post June 2022. So that is now at 94,000. Is that what you're saying to me? That's the, the backlog the, of asylum claims you are working through. The load is 94,062. 94,062. And that includes claims since the Illegal Migration Act. Right. So that's the total number now of who is in the backlog, but we've yeah. recognised from... Back- I'm telling you, you keep describing as a backlog. <laughs> but it's not a backlog. I'm sorry, I don't understand so why it, it's, it's not it's a backlog. The, it's the case... It's the case I mean, why can- is it not a backlog? Because you haven't dealt with them and people are waiting. Why is that not a backlog? <laughs> Well, it's a queue. It's, oh, it's a, a queue. Pros- oh, no, the point is, yeah. no, no, the point is, the point is, you you can apply. Uh, I mean, if, I think your use of the word backlog implies yeah. something that I disagree with, and that's why I, I highlight the point. There is a there are a number of cases that we are that we are working through. At any given time, a new someone who has arrived yeah. will be added to the to the to the to the, the caseload. To the caseload. Yeah. By your definition, if someone arrived yesterday, yeah. that would be a backlog, yeah. and I I don't agree with that as a as a as a definition. So the phrase that that we use, and obviously the committee is at liberty to use whatever you know descriptor you wish to use, but that is our caseload that we are that we are working through. Right. So um, when do you think you'll get to the point where somebody arriving today? will have their claim dealt with within the six months that you used to do in the Home Office. You used to process claims within six months. So uh, this 94,062 Q backlog caseload, mm-hmm. when are you going to get to the point where you're dealing with things quickly and you're not, we're not going to have to talk about backlogs? Well, the, I mean, what we saw last year, because of uh, an increase in the number no, of people... I understand that. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't, I'm just conscious other people have got questions. I just want yeah. to know, have you got a date in your mind when you will... It's, impossi- no, it's, it, it's impossible to give, it's impossible to give okay. a complete uh, uh, date... But the point is that we... did it for the legacy backlog. The, the Prime Minister promised, didn't he, by the end of last year he'd clear the legacy backlog. So I just wondered if you were of a similar mind that you were going to get this... Well, I wanted to do it as soon as... I wanted to do it as, uh, as, uh, as soon as we're able to, yeah. as soon as possible. Okay. Uh, we've got an increased number of people yes, and we, yeah, have we, a faster, yeah, yeah, we have we a faster system. Yeah, yeah, we understand Which that. is why we're able to uh, deal with the backlog and we are working quickly through this Right, I'm going to come load. to Caroline Harris, but just before I do, one other question. On the 33,085 that, uh, that are recognised now within the scope of the Illegal Migration Act, how many are you expecting to send to Rwanda? Well, that would depend on which other countries we have returns agreements with. You haven't got any at the moment. So, I mean, Rwanda's the only safe country that you're obviously processing through. Uh, no, 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 Rwanda's through the not the only safe country. The, whole, the, uh, I mean, the point is there are other safe countries. We, we're negotiating. Uh, we have negotiated. We continue to negotiate returns agreements with other countries. So it's entirely, it's entirely feasible that, that those... Uh, a significant number within that cohort so will be returned to their country 
of origin. Okay, so, but what, what do you expect in terms of the numbers to Rwanda? Because that's your flagship policy, well, you're pushing this through the Commons and the Lords. What, how many of that 33,000 are you expecting will go to Rwanda? It, it, it depends on which other countries we send them to. So, um, the, uh, I mean, the point with Rwanda is that it is part of our response, yes, but only one that. part. And in parallel with the Safety of Rwanda Bill and the yeah. treaty and the work we're doing in Rwanda, yeah, we we're also doing work with other countries. Okay, but just uh, setting aside those other countries... But why would we set aside those other countries? Because you must exist. know at the moment, in terms of the 33,000, which countries you can then send those people to, potentially, because yeah. there's a list. Yeah. But what I'm asking you is, those people who cannot be returned, say if they've come from, I guess... Uh, Afghanistan or oh, yeah. Syria or various other countries. So they are the ones who are going to go to Rwanda. Out of that 33,000, how many, when you get that first plane, which you've talked about wanting to take okay. off as soon as possible, how many are you sending to Rwanda of that 33,000? Well, uh, uh, I'm sorry. sorry. So firstly, the, uh, the Rwanda scheme is an uncapped scheme. Yes. Um, so there's no inherent upper limit within that cohort yeah. of who we could send to Rwanda. Oh, how um, many but, do you think? Uh, again, I, I, it's not a figure I can give you because we are negotiating returns agreements with other countries. As those returns agreements come on stream, the, the, the number of people who can't be returned to their country of origin will reduce. That will have an impact on the number of people that we might send to Rwanda. So you're asking me to, you're asking me to, to, to speculate about a figure which, which, I mean, no one can give you that figure because, as I say, um, if you'd asked me this before we came to the arrangement with Albania, the answer would be very, very, very different to the point that we now have a returns agreement with Albania. We're working returns agreements with other countries that can have a very significant impact on the quantum of people that we might consider going to Rwanda. And because the Rwanda scheme is uncapped... I mean, it, these, would, these would be entirely speculative figures. OK, but with the greatest respect, Home Secretary, you know, Parliament is, is going through the process of putting into place the legislation you need sure. around the safety of Rwanda Bill. Sure. We're told that the government and the Prime Minister, this is a, you know, they want to get this done. Yep. I'm assuming that in place are various operational procedures and you're getting people lined up and you've got perhaps an airline, because last time the Minister were here, was here we didn't have an airline that could remove people. So I'm assuming all this is being planned, because yeah. you're a department of, uh, you know, that has lots of people doing lots of planning. Yeah. So all I'm trying to work out is, what is the plan in terms of dealing with this 33,000? What are you expecting? Is it a hundred? A thousand, ten thousand. What's the plan? With respect, you keep asking me the same question. The answer is therefore going to be the same. Okay. No, that's not what I'm saying at all. That's what well, I'm we're saying. We're not getting an answer. I think that's the problem. You're asking for a figure that no one can provide because it is contingent on other things happening. So, so as so, oh, no, no. You can't answer it if you can't. No, give I am figure, answering. No, I no. I think you're repeating. I understand what you're, you're saying. You're repeating the question because I'm not getting the answer, which is no. The answer we'll is move on. I no, think. the answer is move it on. is entirely dependent on, on what returns. other I on what other work that we okay. do. So you're asking me to speculate, okay. but the answer is entirely dependent on other work we're doing in parallel. Okay. So it may well be that we. If we, if we are successful with returns agreements, if we're able to stabilise, uh, you know, if, if circumstances in other countries okay. uh, change, okay. it may well be that the figure could be quite low. Yeah. It could be nearly uh, that figure. But the point is that, that the figures, the number of people that we might send to Rwanda is entirely contingent on a whole set of other work that we are doing. Thank you. Thank uh, but you. the point is there is no... Cap we to the no, we, we understand there's no cap. I'm just trying we're to get a sense circle. of how many would would go. But Karen so I'll take it. You don't know then. He's absolutely bog awful at this, isn't he? <laughs> absolutely rubbish. <laughs> I also think Dame Dana Johnson is really good at making ministers look really stupid as well. Especially when she did the, oh, it's a Q line. <laughs> Made me chuckle. But what do you guys think? Did our Jimmy Dimley embarrass himself? Is he completely out of his depth? Let me know down below and I shall bid you farewell and take care, my friends.